Yo, what's up, chess.com? My name is Greg Shahadi. I'm an international master of chess, and I'm going to start making fun videos for chess.com. So this one is a blitz brawl. What is a blitz brawl? Well, I'm just going to play a bunch of people in blitz. And when I do that, you know, some people don't play, take blitz so seriously, but I really like to, um, I try my best to win, and I also get sometimes a little emotional uh, when I lose. Because when you put a lot of effort into something, um, it just, you know, it, it makes me angry when I lose too many games. So, it's fun. When I win a lot, I feel good. When I lose a lot, I get angry. I apologize in advance for that. But let's, let's just start playing, and we'll go from there. I'm going to play somebody in three minutes. I actually am not a big expert in how to, how to set up <laughs> these games. All right, somehow I'm playing somebody already. I don't even know how the game started. I just pressed play three minute and all of a sudden I'm playing a FIDE master from Argentina who's 23.58. So perfect uh, level of opponent. I almost always play e4. I guess the clock doesn't start until he makes his first move. So what, what's the idea in three minute chess? Well basically it's very important to move quickly and focus a lot on the clock. But he's still thinking, come on, dude, move. Do something. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yes, yeah, so the clock doesn't start until they make move number one. I'm just, I'm just getting used to the interface here. How long is this going to take? Make a move, dude. All right. That's my first game. Let's play somebody else. I'll rematch this guy, too, if he wants to play for real this time. All right, so we have another opponent who's pretty high rated. Uh, 2236. I hope he makes a chess move. There we go. It's time to play. So I like to play the Roy Lopez. I, I feel like it's a, a very solid opening. It doesn't require too much memorization of opening theory. And I like to play this Chigor in defense. I think all of the different Ray Lopez's are pretty cool, but this is the one I play. So the idea of this one is actually this knight on a5 sometimes is, it's kind of crappy over there, so now I'm rerouting it to a better square. And next move you usually go c4. Yeah, I think this is this is all a theoretical line right now. And generally, you have an idea to set up, like, you put a pawn on h6, a bishop on f8, and then another pawn. Oh, this is, this is usually nice for me. I get to go a5. Oh, God. I had to go a5 right away, right? Now he can go a4. Uh, all right, he didn't. Basically, the whole key is who gains uh, control over the queen side. And I want that to be me. I'm going to put the rook on a6, I think. The plan is to double the rooks and slowly try to attack on the queen side. And I'm going to go h6, g6, bishop g7. Uh, maybe I'll go g6 first, actually. I see no need to play h6 right away. Hmm. Alright, I'm just going to do this. Looking over there to make sure the recording is working well. That's a, actually kind of an annoying move. Maybe I'll go h5 to stop him from going h5. But now my g5 square is weak, so that's something to keep in mind. He can go knight back to f3. Uh, this feels good. If knight g5, bishop h6 is my plan. Alright, back up. Look, he's fast, man. Speed demon here. Uh... If I take, he takes with the c pawn. I have c3 and then knight c4. How good is that? It's probably good. I'm just going to do it. All right, well, now I think this looks nice. Or does it? He can take it, actually. Uh, queen a7, no good. Rook a2. Oh, bishop b1 kicks me out. But then I can't be. Oh, God, I'm slow. Uh, let's put it on a... Can she go maybe back to c2? 
uh oh, knight e6 maybe? The bishop on c1, uh, there's like tricks on my, my bishop on h6. But I'm threatening to take on c3, which is potentially useful. All right, now I have to think. Uh, actually, let's just go back. I don't like these tricks with, with the discovered attacks. I don't know what plan, I don't know what to do here, actually. I know I have to move fast, so I'm going to do this. Let's get rid of this knight, actually. Look how fast this guy is. Man, it's hard competing with such speedy guys. Because the clock's going to matter so much. In, in a game like this, it's, it's just so crucial to have uh, time in your clock. Okay, this is useful for me, I think, to trade these guys. I would love to trade the bishops, because mine's blocked behind pawns, whereas his has more uh, free scope. Well, let's pre-move, just in case. Uh, right, I'll take it. Some other king looks better here. Maybe f6. What the heck, let's just do it. His queen is tied down to his c-pawn, which is very useful for me. Bishop d7 and rook f8 next is, is my plan. Whatever. The rook looks useful here. Um, queen g5 runs into knight f5 I can take with the rook. That's annoying. I'll go back. But now his queen's no longer tied down. Oh, rook a1, maybe? I don't know. Let's go rook a8. Oh, no, then he has knight f5 for real. Um, let's do this. Let's do this. Now I get this rook a2 coming. I'm playing all right positionally this game, I think. This looks annoying. Oh, he can just go queen b2. Oh, then rook b3 is annoying. Followed by knight a4. Look at this total domination. If knight c3, rook c3. I think. Uh, I think this is good. He takes my knight, I take his knight. And now... What? Sorry. We're, let's just go here. I don't know why I allowed that, but it should be okay. Ooh, this looks good. Discovered check, winning the queen. Yay, I win my first game. Uh, I'll rematch him. I, I, I'd like to analyze the game, but on the other hand, I feel like it's kind of rude not to do a rematch. Okay, he declined it, so we can take a quick look at some of the key moments from this game. I like to do that sometimes, so that, because, you know, this game goes real fast, and I know you guys want to know what the heck was going on. So this is actually all opening theory in the Roy Lopez, uh, very normal position. Um, knight a5 attacks the bishop. This is all a standard line of the Chigorin Roy Lopez. Chigorin was a Russian master from the early, sorry, the late 1800s. And now there's a, like a billion different moves, like pawn takes pawn, knight c6. Um, I just play the move bishop to d7. Why did I choose this move? Well, I looked at all the different choices. I noticed that it's not super popular, but also black seems to have a theoretically good position. And there's not much theory to memorize. I don't like to have to memorize too many opening lines these days. So I'm trying to slowly shift all my openings to stuff with less memorization. Uh, so anyway, he played knight f1, and this is all normal. See, because one thing that happens here, let's just say theoretically, he gets a position like this. All right, take a look at this knight. It can only it can't go to c4. It can't go to can't go to c6. It can only go to b7. Let's say we put it on b7. Now where does it go? Um, let's just for an example. What the heck happened? One of my pawns disappeared. <laughs> all right. Knight f1, let's say I try to get it to c5. Well, he's going to stop me, all right? Uh, and you take a look at this knight on b7. It has d8 square. And then even when it's on d8, it, it can't go to e6 or c6. The whole, the whole story of this opening is the dominated knight. And basically, I just try to avoid that at all costs. So if he goes d5, I immediately go c4 uh, to try to get my knight to, to this square. And when he does this, oh, sorry, how the, the actual game went, not like that. How do I go back to the game and analysis? I don't know how to do that. Well, it went knight f1. Dang, the moves are gone. Why did the moves go away? Um, they're all 
fuck on. Can't find. I can't get them back. <laughs> uh, I have to learn how to do that, I guess, in, in the future, because I just made an alternate move and then all the moves disappeared. Whatever. We'll figure it out later. Anyway, we're playing three minute now. I, I wonder how the algorithm works. It keeps pairing me with pretty good players, but how come that happens? All right, I'm playing a. I'm playing this twenty three fifty guy from Argentina. I don't even know what my rating is supposed to be here because I don't have so many games under my belt. H3 to stop bishop g4 is a typical move here. So, I mean, it's the theoretical move. And usually they play, I think knight f6 is the move. I have to kind of remember the lines. Usually they go knight e4. And I take and I do this. I had a game against Grandmaster Alexander Strapunsky in this variation, and I managed to win that game, so I feel I have some experience in this line. I think it's this move, and if queen a5, ch see, I, somebody played this against me recently. Now all I gotta do is play better. I lost that game, but the, the point was, this is the right move, that's, that's all I know, and I did something else that wasn't that move. I did something like, because he's threatening h6 to trap my knight, if you notice. And so I don't want to allow that to happen. Um, so this is what I think was the right move, but it's very complicated. I wonder if this is the same opponent. Hmm. I guess I'll do this. I'm, I'm going to basically, if he takes on b2, I think I'm going to just castle. Yeah. And I'm hoping that somehow this is okay for me. I'm down a pawn, but his queen is kind of like, Offsides. We'll see. But the point, by the way, that's really important from this game is that studying your blitz games is really important. My last time I played this line, it was just a blitz game. Uh, and you could say, like, oh, just blitz games aren't that important. But if I didn't play that blitz game and study it afterwards, I wouldn't be knowing what to do in this position, which is uh, it's, it's just important <laughs> to take all your games seriously. I think I'm going to, I'm going to, oh, I was going to take and go knight e5, but I don't know. Something feels like not great for me here. Like I kind of didn't get compensation for the pawn. Um, I don't know what to do. Alright, I'm just going to do this. Uh, I assume bishop f8 or something. Oh, then I can maybe take on h6. That's interesting. Take on h6, he takes. I take on e7, he moves the king, I take. He takes with a bishop. It's not so good for me, turns out. Because this bishop defends the rook. So, but, you know, I have, I have some compensation, but he does have an extra pawn. And I'm, I'm just not, not sure what to do about it. That's an interesting move. I don't know, even queen c7 looks interesting. Queen c1, sorry. But, but queen d2, what's he doing? Knight, that looks like a horrible move that he just played. It looks really bad. Like, why would he do that? Why not just defend the e pawn? Now I'm attacking h6. Uh, I'm attacking e7. His bishop is pinned. Just a, a very strange choice uh, by my opponent. I mean, I can, oh, can I win that bishop somehow? Like, rook c1, what does he do? It looks almost winning. I'm just going to do it. Maybe queen b3. Hmm. It's unfortunate. Because I, I was almost almost just winning. But he has queen b3 attacking my knight. But then, you know, I have a good feeling about this move. Or maybe maybe queen takes. And then if queen takes d5, bishop f3, I'm going to go for it. Because when he moves his queen, I take his knight. And I'm up a piece. And I'm up on time. He can't move the knight because, like, queen takes rook. So I should have a winning position here. And next move, I'll just move my bishop away somewhere. Uh, this check is actually really annoying. He takes it, I take his rook. I take his rook now. Uh, this move looks really troublesome because now his bishop is kind of locked down. Now he can't trade my queens because my pawn recaptures and he gets destroyed. He can probably safely resign here. Uh, I 
through. I was going to make sure you guys can see my face the whole time. So I don't see any any big... Oh, i got to move fast. But I don't see like this check being too dangerous. Eh, I'm not so worried about that move either. What, what's the deal here? What if I just take it? I don't see a problem. Oh, he's attacking both of my guys. Alright, I guess I'll do this. He was attacking both of my bishops. And now my e pawn is going to win the game. Boom, boom. He made a horrible mistake with bishop to c2. That was just not, not a good move. We'll, we'll take a look after if he doesn't want to rematch. But he, he self-pinned his bishop, as you saw. Uh, what is this move doing? No idea. If bishop to d4... I mean, I can win in a lot of different ways here. You know, I'm just going to be, like, total... Total, total wuss and just defend the pawn. I don't... I'm sure I didn't have to do it that way. I'm um, not sure what this accomplishes. I'm just going to do that. If he takes it, I go queen d8, followed by making a queen. Yay, I win. Uh, does he want to rematch? Oh, he does. Alright. So, now I'm going to play... I like to play the Nimzo Indian and, and Bogo Indian type setups. Queen e7. This is all theoretical stuff. Uh, now I take... And I go knight c6. And then I go d5. This is a not super common line, but I think it's totally cool for for black. I have an extra pawn right now. I can't remember what to do. Rook b8. It, it, in lines like this, actually, you sometimes just try to hold on to this pawn. So I might think about just b5 next move. That's why I played rook b8, of course. And yeah, what the heck? Let's just hold on to it. And now I assume a6. I'm thinking about b4, but usually when things get a little loose on the queen side, if I go b4, the c4 pawn becomes more difficult to defend. Although I could have went b4 and bishop a6, and I think it also would have been very nice for me. But now I'm just going to hold on tight here. Maybe knight b4, actually, because knight can come to d3. Hmm. Well, I should develop a piece, actually. Let's go rook d8. But knight b4 next move. I give e4, gaining space in the center. I think I'm going to play that knight, a, knight b4 move. Trying to sneak into d3 squares. Or, or d5 in some line. If he goes e5, I have more control over the d5 square. Uh, that's an annoying move. Hmm. I think knight to d7. I gotta, I gotta get rid of this knight. It's really strong and annoying there, and it, it ties my knight down to b4 because he would go knight c6 if only my knight was not there. But fortunately, it is there. Ah, uh, let's just defend my b pawn so that my rook is not tied down to it. And now I'm just gonna slowly maneuver around. Let's start with this move. You don't want him owning the a file. That looks kind of useless after knight b6, just kicking his rook away. He has to go all the way back, I think. Um, knight d3 looks really unpleasant, because I'm threatening b4 now. Pawn to b4 would fork his rook and his knight. Uh, queen b4? Looks nice. You know what? Yeah, it looks very aggressive and annoying. Attacking b2. My clock situation, it's not ideal. It's not horrible either. Oh, that looks good for me. Now I have the A-file. If he, Yeah, I, I didn't like giving up the A-file on his part. My bishop is still like not, not great. Somehow this looks good. Oh, I just noticed he has D5. But then I guess I'll go C5. D5 attacks my knight on B6 as like a discovery. 
fortunately, it's not as bad for me as it could be. I'm gonna start moving quickly, quickly, uh, because I don't want, I don't want to get low on time here. I wanna, I wanna have the time advantage and the positional advantage. I'm very greedy like that. So now, let's just trade it, I guess. Seems okay. And then the question is, do I take on d5? I think so, because if, if pawn takes bishop f5. And when he moves his rook, I take on b2. Uh, this now I can pin it with something. Uh, with this guy, I guess. I mean, he likes to walk into self pins, this, this, this opponent, I've noticed. Let's take and then swing my knight over to e5. A beautiful square for the knight, blockading his pawns. This is like a positional concept. You want your knights in front of pawns blockading them. When the knight's on e5, nothing can nothing can push it away. Which is why I'm feeling happy about that idea. Uh, knight to d5 is going to be super annoying. I'm going to actually preemptively remove my queen. Let's do this. I, my knight's good, but his knight's good too. I didn't see that move. How big of a problem is it? I don't know. I'm just going to start making random weirdo moves. Oh God, I'm running out of time. Um, Alright, let's do this. Attack the e-pawn. Uh, how annoying is that? It's probably pretty annoying. This last move I made was probably not good. I'm gonna go back. Oh my god, look at my clock. I need to go... I need to do something and fast. That move is probably not the best. Just trying to sneak my queen in to like counterattack somehow. That was not good. <laughs> Just Oh, rook d2 he can't play. I thought he could. Um, well, he's gonna have to block again. Oh wow, really? I have to move fast, obviously. No more time to Kit Kat. It's gonna make quick, quick pre moves. Ah, uh, these moves are bad that I made. <laughs> oh. This might be a draw, actually. Oh, I have two seconds. I'm gonna lose in time. Ah! I mean, you know, I have to get more used to the clock here, unfortunately. This is what I'm saying, the clock time is so important in chess. Like, the whole game, I, I think I played very well, but, you know, when you when you get down to one second, I, I wasn't even paying, honestly, I wasn't paying close enough attention to my clock. I'm going to play the same game that I did last time. So, oh, my God. To lose that position is, is kind of annoying. We're going to do the same thing. I, I mean, let's see if he can find a better move this time. After bishop f5, we could also try knight g3, honestly. But mm, I'll do the same thing. Because his move was bad, maybe he'll just do it again. <laughs> I don't know. Probably not. I'll give him the chance to improve. Let's see what he comes up with. I mean, I think bishop f8 is pretty logical. And then I was thinking... I was thinking bishop a6, or is that just not good? This move looks bad, too. I, I just don't... I don't know. I don't like these moves he's playing. Uh, queen c1 actually looks good here. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, what the heck? Because I have this like annoying, I have this annoying bishop a6 type move. We'll see. I, I don't know if queen c1 is the best. Oh my god, I blundered my my bishop. That wasn't good. <laughs> that was pretty bad. All right, I'm probably gonna lose. Oh my god. Why didn't I at least take the h-pawn? Oh, he had discovered attacks. Alright, I'm just down a piece. Oh my gosh. So brutal. Hey, oh, he moved? I didn't even see he moved. Unbelievable. Alright, knight f4. I'm not going to give up because I've gotten lucky before, but this position is very, very much on the hopeless side of things. Uh, pieces are very important against FMs, so to have one less is just pretty much a disaster. I don't know why I'm doing this move. Hmm. All right, I'll attack his knight. He'll probably go knight e7. Oh, then knight e7, queen c7. Everything looks okay for him. I'm gonna do this because it's check. His bishop won f5, g4 at some point could be annoying, I guess. Not really, though. Oh my god, I'm so dead. I'm just trying to look for any way to make it at least interesting, but I don't... I don't think it's going to happen. Um, yeah, I'm just so lost here. It's hopeless. But never resign. Never resign. This is... This is sad. I'm sad. That's all. Um, okay. I'm gonna crush this guy in the next game so bad. What was the opening last time? Oh, it was some, like, Bogo Indian that he didn't he play. He played badly, but... Somehow... Managed to win anyway. He played, like, I was better. That's basically what was happening last game, and I just kind of messed things up with the clock. Oh, sometimes you just want to resign so the game, the pain will end. Because this is just, I feel like, painful to play this position. But again, I have saved too many hopeless positions to ever resign, but this is really hopeless. Could, oh, I didn't mean to do that, but I guess I'm going to resign. All right, screw this. Now I mean business. Let's go, sucker. I'm going to win the next two games to, to win the series. Uh, I'll play the same thing, because I, I just got a very good position. All right, he didn't seem to mind this position. I thought it was very, very good for me. I'll do it again, man. All right, all right. Uh, I I still think a four b four is also very strong. You know what? Oh, he can. I'm just gonna do it this time. I'm just, just kind of curious. I mean, it looks like overwhelming for me, honestly. Like a move like this just looks so powerful. I know my bishop's like not defended, but I'm up a pawn. It just looks good. Uh, C3 looks strong now. Because when he takes my bishop, I take on B2 and fork both his rooks. If queen C2, bishop to D3 is like really obnoxious but strong, I think. I'll just play the... I'll play it fast. I don't want to get in time trouble. It's obnoxious because he takes it. I take his pawn and fork his rooks again. Uh, now knight A5 and he probably has to resign soon. I think b3 is winning. This is what happens, man, when you piss me off. <laughs> oh, that was nice. Yeah, I mean, the, the opening is just bad. I don't know why I didn't recognize it. I'm probably going to do something different this game. I'm just going to avoid opening theory. Alright, I'll do it again. Um, I changed my mind. I'll... 
I'll do this, and I'll go bishop d3 after knight f6. This line is basically fine for black, but it's more more calm, more room to outplay him. Because he seems to know all that opening theory, and I don't know exactly what to do in that final position. I just develop my bishop or something. Maybe I'll put it here. No, then... Alright, I'm going to do this. It looks a little awkward, though. This is stupid. Oh, is it? Is it stupid? Because uh, his e-pawn, like, so if he takes my pawn on d4, my rook and my bishop on g5 are combining to attack his e-pawn. See, this now I like it for me. Because he can't really recapture my pawn. Because queen takes queen and bishop e7. And now... I'm just gonna play positional. I don't wanna. I don't wanna get greedy here. Position's probably about even. Maybe I have a slight advantage, but I don't think so. I think his bishop. Yeah, it's a good move because now he can develop his bishop to b7. All right, I'm just gonna develop my pieces. I don't see any amazing thing to do. He's gonna go. Oh, he did that one. I mean, there's nothing wrong with putting the queen here, actually, because bishop f4 in some lines, or bishop h6, seem fine for me. Alright. Whatever. Put my rook in the middle. When you don't know what to do, usually putting your rook in the middle of the board is a solid choice. This guy's fast, though. I feel like I've been moving quickly this game, but we're we're even on time. Need some water. <sighs> uh, I think the position is fine for him. It's just a normal chess game. He's the oh he can't go rook d8 anymore because he just opened up my bishop to the d8 square. So that's like slightly annoying for him because. Obviously, the most natural place for the rook is d8 on the open file. So, do I go bishop h6 here to continue to keep him out, or do I do I not? Uh, I think I'm going to do that. Make his life difficult for a little longer. And now my bishop's going to come to b3. Okay, if bishop b3, yeah, because if he take, goes bishop c4, I'm probably... I might take and go rook d7. I'll let him take my a pawn just to get like an active rook. Or is that not a good idea? I'm not sure. It might be too risky. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's good. I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go like this. But now the thing is, he just equalizes with capturing and, and playing rook to d8, and it's not so clear what I have in this position. I might bishop on h4 is a little clumsy. Like it doesn't have so many great places to go. I'm just going to go back to g3. Stop knight f4 type moves. Oh, make a check. What the heck? If queen f7, ugh, I don't know. I actually have to take. I guess b4, but his knight's kind of becoming pesky. I guess rookie 2? Okay. Uh, now I get the knight on a good square. Although he... he Alright, I'm just going to hope it's okay. He has like with some passable tactical attempts, but I wasn't sure how good they were. Attacking his rook. If rook Rook d7. Let's go after the a pawn, man. I mean, rook a8 is pretty pathetic, so he, he doesn't want to do that, but he might feel like he has to. Oh man, ah, uh, I gotta move fast, right? Bishop h4. I might, I might lose my bishop someday, so I'm gonna go back to h2. That move looks bad. I'm gonna take it. I don't know. I don't know why I did it. Okie doke. 
If knight b2, I guess this move. I feel like I have like some initiative with my pieces now. Like knight to b5 check type moves. And I gotta go fast. I'm up 10 seconds in the clock, so I really need to play for the clock. Oh, he can't take my pawn. I'm defending it. I didn't realize that. I'm a total noob. Mm, Alright, move somewhere, Greg. This looks like a move. And now... Defend that pawn. And now... He offered me a draw for some weirdo reason. Obviously, I have no intention of accepting. Uh, let's just defend my stuff. I gotta move fast, of course. Alright, looking good. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Oh, I could be winning though. Oh, no, I'm not. But I'm gonna flag him like he flagged me. I win! Alright, up 3-2. to two. Let's take him out one more time. Yeah, let's see if he can improve in his opening that he's not been playing very well. Alright, so he's doing the same thing as me, kind of just going for something more positional now. And I think we're going to call this the last game, assuming I win. If I lose, I may have to play more due to anger. Mm, I'm going to castle and, and try to get d5 in so that my bishop on c8 doesn't get really bad. Oh, but now I have an isolated pawn. That's no fun. Oh my god, this position is actually already kind of unpleasant. Bishop E, uh, it's whatever, it's a crappy move, but I don't know how else to hold on to my E pawn. D pawn, sorry. What is that? That's a strange move, man. Uh. Okay. Oh, I just realized I. You can take my pawn next move. Queen T7, I guess. Position's a little unpleasant for me, but I feel like I've, I don't know, weathered the, weathered the storm or something. Um, pawn takes, I think, yeah. I mean, objectively, he should be a little better somehow with the two bishops. That looks like a good move, putting pressure on that pawn. How do I deal with it now? Rook c8, I guess. I'm going to stop knight c7, but I have a... I'm scared, man. Maybe g5 and g4. It looks so crazy, though. I'm going to do this. g5 is just so weakening uh, to my king side. I need to win this game. Very important. Uh, that looks strange, letting me do this with tempo. I'm just getting a free attack in his queen. G5 now kind of traps the bishop, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> I think it traps the bishop. It looks like it does, right? Glory! Uh, that's why it's good to look at those moves, even when they're not good, is because then they they stuck in your brain, and so I can find them easier when they actually are good. So now if I move my knight, he has stuff like bishop takes e6. So I have to really think about how to how to deal with this. I, mean, I think bishop c5 is pretty good. I just may have like a crushing... I'm going to do this. I feel like I may have something even stronger, but... This looks strong enough. I'm going to win at least the exchange. And now I just have to figure out the, the smart way to play. Knight e7 or knight d8? Knight d8 looks real strong. I just want to overprotect the e-pawn. E I'm also, my queen is now attacking his knight, so he has to go queen to b4, at which point I can attack it again, and then I take his f-pawn. Uh, probably with this rook. And I'm just up the exchange. 
And I guess I'm going to move my king out of the way. Just looks exposed there. So I'm up the exchange, but I'm down in time. I'm going to move this rook back to overprotect my pawn some more. I have rook g1, rook g8. This looks fine. Queen g... If queen to... um. How annoying is that? It's probably not very annoying. I couldn't take it because the, the, the queen was pinning it. But I, I, you know, I'm up in exchange. I gotta move quickly. Just make sure nothing disastrous happens. I'll do this because if queen takes a7, I can I can just sack on g3 and win. I'm sure, probably pretty easily. So I'm up the exchange in an end game. So that's good news for me. I'm going to start already with my clock management stuff. This move looks irritating. It's kind of a in-his-face type of move. Rook f8 looks good next move. Knight f5 to e3. I gotta catch up on the clock. I don't want to. I don't want to have to constantly face that that time pressure. I need to re. I need to retake the uh, the C file, which I think I'm going to next move. Mm hmm. Uh. All right. Whatever. He's gonna get some stuff. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it. I, maybe I messed up. Maybe I had a better way to deal with this, but. Sorry, sorry. So brutal what just happened. Maybe I mean, he's actually got to be slightly minutely careful here. Minutely careful. Uh, he's still winning, of course. His bishop controls the queening square. Hey, I'm getting some pawns, though. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just like so so brutal this game. Can't even take my queen. Just keep my life simple. Get all these pieces off the board. Let's get that last pawn. I win. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the video on that note. Uh, we we can real quickly analyze that game. Of course, I, I had a, a, a really strong position, and oh, wait, let me, sorry, <laughs> I had a really strong position. And then I did something horrible. Well, this position should be like worse for me. I mean, when I have to make a move like this, giving him the option of knight takes bishop, it's kind of unpleasant. But I, I know somehow he misplayed it. Like this move felt odd. I mean, maybe like rook c1 is more logical, or maybe I don't know. Take the bishop and try for e4 or something. I mean, if he if he takes this somehow, I'm attacking his knight. So. Oh no, I did the wrong thing. I forgot once I once I make a different move I lose the whole game. I, I gotta figure that out. I think if I click on my view game archive. Oh there we go. There we go. So basically sorry. How do I flip the board? I probably probably press flip board. Uh, where did he go wrong? This was a good move, putting pressure on my pawn. And like I said, I wanted to go g5. Oh, good, the analysis is still there. And and I thought about like like something like this. But now you look at the position, my king size like Swiss cheese. It just felt unpleasant. So we're gonna go back to the game continuation. This the idea of this is he's threatening knight c7, which would uh, attack my rook and my pawn. So I try to stop that. 
And yeah, I thought this was a weird move, because I, I get to do this and attack his queen. And yeah, this is just a blunder. Now g5. And the reason I saw this is because I thought about it earlier. And so that's why I saw it so quickly. Um, so it's like candidate moves are really important, because even when they're bad, they stay in your mind for future moments. And so I was in a blitz game to be able to find it instantly, only because I saw it three moves ago. If I didn't think about it earlier, I'd say there's a good chance I would just overlook the possibility. But so now I just win the exchange. I, I basically had a winning position. <laughs> and let's go like to near the end, because it was funny. So I mean, I, I don't know. He did something like his technique was off. This is a scream-inducing move. I, I don't understand how I won this game, but somehow it happened. I mean, just go rook d2, dude. Don't let me push the pawn some more. But he did. For some reason, he had no fear of my pawn at all. And f4. So bishop d1 is fine, and now he just blundered. And I didn't take advantage of it. But like this move is just a horrific blunder. And then I played this brilliant move, which caused me to scream again. And fortunately, he didn't see it. I mean, he has to move the bishop back or something. I actually have compensation now, though. Be well, no, what you should do is... No, he can't do this because this is check. So, I mean, king f3 loses. He has to go back, maybe. And now I have actually serious counterplay. He might be in trouble because these pawns are fast. But his move has made my life a lot easier. But that's kind of funny, right? I just blundered my knight for nothing. Like, absolutely nothing. And down a pawn and a piece. And I was, like, winning in five moves. I don't even know how that happens. But he basically just ignored my pawn. So, uh, thanks, guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed these games. And I hope to be doing this uh, more often. See you next time. Bye-bye.